is online so we'll just wait for him to request voila live with one man that i so much respect a very successful man a pastor good evening uh, uh, right sorry, on who are you describing like that do i know the person <laughs> good evening sir it's uh like i would always so say something you? that i have learned personally you is time management and i'm always comment i didn't even bother reaching out to you i was like i'm very sure that once he sees <laughs> mr cole would definitely be <laughs> online and yes it is for me at all good evening know, sir know, thank you so much thank God. such an honor it's such a great privilege to have you here with us the entire shikan nigeria committee members we say very big thanks to you and uh, one thing that um, I really want to say to everyone who is, who, is, who is tuned in and for those who will be tuning in soon is the fact that Mr. Toye, like we all know, yes, he's a, he's a brand. The name Toye is a brand. And one good thing is the fact that, sir, even the fact that you're successful, you are still into learning. You're still learning just some months ago we did that you were in school. You know, the, the co-founder and the former group executive director of Sahara that's in 38 countries with over 4,000 employees and you're still, you know, trying to equip yourself, trying to say that, look, I can do more. So you're the true definition of what we preach. She can do more. And really, I must say thank you so much, sir. Today, we want to learn so much from you. So many people have sent in questions for, for you, sir. So we'll be asking you some questions. But before yeah. then, we want to learn from the guru. We want to learn from you because it's such a privilege that when you have people who have been able to build global businesses, not one, not two, businesses that have been sustained, businesses that have a very strong structure, it is important that there is something they know that you need to learn from. And that's why we decided today that, sir, we want to learn from you. We want to be able to tap from your wealth of knowledge. Firstly, we want to know in creating businesses, what and what do we need to do? So I'm going to give you the next 30 minutes to just go all over it. And then we'll <laughs> jump into our Q&A session. Yes, sir. So over <laughs> to you, sir. Thank you so much. You know, you know yeah, okay. So, so and foremost, is in it? Me, I came to learn from you. I don't know what all of this yeah, that you are learning from me, uh, business is. You are the, you are the <laughs> boss. You are the one that we are learning from. Uh, yeah, you've, you've taken... I, I have so many questions for you. Are, are I'd like to know... <laughs> no, I'm serious. You see, I, I, I have so many questions for you. I'd like to know how you started how you have been driving this whole thing. How do you continue to get such amazing people to come and speak at your, uh, at your, at your IG live event? How do you do it? What, you know, you, you should be the one teaching us. So why, why, why do you think that I have to come and start telling you uh, things? You are the new generation. You are the one that has... <laughs> ah, no, please. Can we learn from you? Uh... <laughs> Can we? Stop. Thank you, but you know the truth is, we are we when 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 there are steps, we are here, and we 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 know that there is a gap that we need to get to. There is a structure <laughs> we need to learn to build, and that's why we need to hear from you today, sir. Anyway, okay. Look, um, first of all, thank you very much, and thank you for having me here. Um, I know thank that you. one hour one hour is always a very very short time, and there's always so much to pack in and. So many people have questions to ask and all. And so uh, for the benefit of making sure that your viewers and those who follow you uh, get as many of their questions in, I'm going to shorten the part of what I have to say uh, to just a few minutes. And then let's just, let's have the conversation. Let's dialogue. Let's uh, deal with the questions that I know that you have. And as those questions come, we answer it. And then we take, we, we take on from there. So, let me start with the first. I'll, I'll take what you said as a first question. Okay, uh, basically, what do you need to do to structure business, and how do you how, what what should you do creating business? So, let's assume first and foremost that you have an idea and you want to put that idea, you want to birth that idea, and you're thinking about what should you do. 
the first aspect of it uh, that you must do if you're going to uh, structure your business is make sure that you put together the little things that you that that you need to get that business uh, done. So the first, are you registered? What type of registration do you have? Is it an enterprise or is it a, an incorporation, a limited liability company? What do you do? You see, you need to think about that, which means that one of the things that you must always do for anyone who's going to set up a business is that you must have dialogue. You must talk and you must question, you must query uh, your, um, your, your query, your idea, query how do you want to set it up? And meanwhile, the business does not warrant that. So you don't really need to do all of that. So tailor what you're registering along with the type of business uh, that you have. Now, are you going to have partners? Is it something you can do on your own? So there are questions that you need to sit down and ask before you move forward. Once you have all those things, then you are ready, uh, ready to go. And so there are so many ways to set up businesses. There are so many things that you can do. The question is what is the line of business how do you want to put it together what type what area are you going into and things like that so fire away what's your question great thank you sir so the first question here is how do i identify a business opportunity hmm. okay so business opportunities exist everywhere right but the first thing that you must do is that does it solve a problem you see, opportunities are created by problems that need solutions. If it solves a problem, then it's already an opportunity. So the first question you must ask is, what is the problem that this opportunity is solving? That's the first question. So if you do that, you've already discovered an opportunity. And then you can then begin to ask that, okay, if I solve this opportunity, if I solve this problem with this opportunity, what will it translate to? Is it mm. amazing? Okay. The next question, sir, is what gives you the courage to start a new company or invest in one, even when you're not sure? And how are you able to identify a business opportunity? Okay. So, uh, second question has been answered. The first aspect of it, regarding courage. Now, mm -hmm. if you don't start it, you won't have yeah. peace. Mm -hmm. uh, you will not have peace. <laughs> because some, something is going to be pushing you all the time saying that, look, you need to start this. So the first thing that you must do is you must realize that there is fear and that fear holds you. And that is why you require the courage for the courage to take you over the, over the fear. So there is healthy fear. And if you are not afraid, then you will be reckless. So there's a fear that must come, which would allow you to sit down and pause and think about it. But once you have gone over that pause and you've thought about it and you've planned it, then yeah. you require courage. If you don't do the courage, you're never going to move forward. So the question that you then ask yourself is that, do you have enough to push this business forward? Or are you going to sit down and do nothing about it? My yeah. advice, push, go forward. Hmm. Push. You've heard it. Push and go forward. If Mr. Toyeko could, yes, you can. <laughs> All right, sir. So my next question for you is how are you able to stay calm and active even with pressures around? How are you able to stay calm and active even with pressures around? Okay, so how do you stay calm and active even with pressures around if I heard the question right? Oh, okay. So, yes, sir. very good. So the first aspect of it is enjoy what you do. You see, if you don't enjoy what you are doing, then it becomes work. And there is, you see, work in itself is labor. That is toiling. When you enter yeah. into the space of work, ah, no, 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 you can never enjoy it. So first thing is make sure that you enjoy what you're doing. 
Now, when you enjoy what you're doing, there's a calm, there's a peace that just goes with it because everything just seems to fall into place. You're having fun and all of that. That's it. So the first, enjoy what you're doing. Then the second, don't enjoy it so much that you now don't balance other things. So you're doing so much work that you now, uh, you now neglect family. You're doing so much work, you neglect your spiritual life. You're doing so much work, you neglect your health. Now, what, it, what would happen is that you would be enjoying yourself and then all of those things that you've neglected will come and catch up with you. So don't do that. Get a sense of balance in what you're doing. But first and foremost, for work, enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you will not last with it. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Enjoy what you find your hands doing. Wow, well done, sir. There's a question here. The person says, my family does not see the need for me to push my business forward. How do I make them see reason with me? I have tried so much. Stop trying to let them see reason with you. Focus and succeed in the business. You see, they say failure uh, is an orphan. Success in itself, ah, everybody has many, 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 many parents, many family members and all of that. So, it is not for you. Your fa- it's not for you to make your family see what you see. You have been given. You can see what they cannot see. Huh? So what you need to do is just succeed and push. And I'll give you an example. In so I studied architecture, right? And I remember that we. I went to Port Harcourt. Uh, I moved to Port Harcourt when uh, we set up Sahara to start uh, Port Harcourt in Sahara. Now um, my father had a was he had a plot that he was developing at the time and what he wanted me to do as a, as an architect's son and all of that was to make sure that i supervised i did everything as far as that building was concerned but i was trying to do sahara he wanted me to do architecture uh, to do the building and all of that and i had to choose he could not see at the time what i could see about the business all he saw was that you are a good architect you had uh, recommendations from school and all of that, that you are a good architect. I have a building that is coming up. Focus on this building and do it. It was a big fight, but I just focused on Sahara. Now, at the end of the day, what happened? He's very proud that he had a successful son. If I had left Sahara to focus on that building, I would be miserable and probably... (laughs) <laughs> Let me not say more. <laughs> we all join him to be very proud of Sarah. <laughs> well done, sir. Okay, so my next question says, how how do I create a business in the midst of no capital or in the midst of failure? So the person has two questions in one. I think the person currently, the COVID currently has hit the person's business. And the person is saying, how do I create a business even without capital okay so the the first place that every business starts the very first place that every business starts is with an idea so let's understand that when god gives you that idea and you have the idea to start a business the next aspect is that the tools that you need for that business right is usually close by it's not that far it's not that far where the main problem is is that People get an idea, right, that this is where they want to start. Because, because they're the ones who develop the idea, they can see somewhere in their mind's eye that this business that they are starting can become very big. Now, they project the very big uh, and start looking for the money for the very big, and they forget the money to start. The money to start, what you need to start is small. What you need to start will keep you in a very small space while you are moving to the big. But people leave the big, they leave the small and start chasing the big. And out of chasing the big, there's a lot of frustration. Start small. What you have, that idea that you have, there's a space around you for you to finance it and fund it for what it is and begin to grow it through there. That's number one. Number two, in the area of a crisis, opportunities that exist in an area of a crisis, what you have to figure out is that where you are, is it an opportunity 
or is it an area that has already been collapsed out of the crisis? What a lot of people are looking at, they're not looking into the areas where there are opportunities uh, created. They are being stuck or they are staying in an area that has been affected by the crisis. If you're staying in an area affected totally by crisis, nobody is going to give you money to do That's anything it. there. What you need to do is begin to figure out that where are the opportunities that have been created and you go there. If you have the idea and you understand how to do it, the funding for it will be around it. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. Someone here is saying business funding in Nigeria is not easy to acquire. So how does one acquire capital in Nigeria? Oops. Okay. Okay. So somehow I no, think I you, you... Okay. No, All no. Right. You see, guys, uh, look, they used to tell us that you cannot, uh, you can't raise money in Nigeria. It's not, it's very, it's very difficult. It's not possible. You cannot do anything and all of that. Um, I remember when we were going after uh, assets for power, power assets, uh, electricity. Yes, sir. We ended up raising a billion dollars uh, in Nigeria. One billion dollars. They said it's impossible. Ah, you can't do it. This, that, 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 Nigeria, they don't do it. It's up wow. to you. It's your mindset. It's what you think that you can do, that you will do. I agree. People would always say, ah, it's not possible. You this. No. First of all, if you have that mindset that it's impossible, it's impossible, you have already failed, it's impossible for you. So where the challenge is, is how are you packaging and how are you presenting what you want? If you go with an idea and you have worked it out in such a way that everybody is clear, you are clear about the steps, you are clear about the process, you are clear about what you need, you will find the money. What people do, you know, somebody has a business, they call you, uh, they'll just call you and say, ah, I want to start up one business. And then they will send you an SMS, <laughs> account number. Uh, They'll send you an SMS, their account number, and tell you that they want to start a business that you should transfer money to their account. Without a business plan, nothing. Nothing, nothing. Just phone call uh, or text message, SMS. I'm about to start this business. Please, can you transfer this amount of money? How? That's the Because that is going to be challenging. Or... They just get up one day. They have never done anything at all. No business, nothing. Then they get up, they walk to the bank and they go and ask the bank that they want to collect money. They're wrong. It's yeah. totally wrong. It's totally wrong. The place to start, the money you need to start is around you. It's around you. But it means that humble yourself and start small. Start yeah. small. Start small. Once you start that small, small, and you start growing it and growing it, then the bigger money will come. It will chase you. There's a time for you to be looking for money to do business. There's a time that the money starts looking for you. So figure it out. Mm, that is so powerful. That is so, so, so powerful, sir. Okay, I'll quickly run to my next question because I have a whole lot for you, sir. As an entrepreneur, how do you balance the place of bringing in family into your business? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> my, advice, my advice is be very careful. Though. Be very mm. careful about family in your business. Uh, family in your business is a very tough one. It's a dangerous place to go. Uh, it's very dangerous. Um, <clears throat> some, some, a few work but very, very few, very, very few work. So if you set up a business that is all family, nobody else, it's a toy call and sons and sons okay. limited, no problem. So you want to set up a business that is only about you and the family, nobody coming in, no partners, nothing, just family members. That's fine. You can go ahead, do that. The ability for such businesses uh, to transcend from one generation to another and all that, it's often difficult. You have, to, you have to begin to inculcate in the children that you are going to hand over that this is what they are going to do. It's a family business. You have to start training them from childhood. You have to make sure that you lock whatever they are doing inside what you are doing. Um, and it's difficult. So it's very difficult for that to happen because most people have their own dreams. They want to do other things and all, but it happens. So that's the first aspect of it. So it's possible, but... If you want to do that, just know that Someone it has its limitations. Something in relation. There's something in relation. So Luatosi is saying, how do you then separate friendship from business? So it's almost related. I just wanted you to answer both at the same time. Sorry, I didn't hear that. You're how breaking up. How do you up. separate Says friendship what? from business? 
Okay, so Oluwa Tosin said, how do you separate friendship from business? Separate friendship from business. Yes, sir. From business. Okay, I got it. So usually, uh, usually, friends, best friends, we are tight food friends, we are school friends, we grow up by good friends. Usually, they make very bad business partners. Huh? Who emotionally? Yeah. My, this is my friend. Let us set up business together because we are friends. More often than not, that business will crash. That business will crash. True. So yeah. what you are looking for when you are setting up a business and partnership, it's not that are we friends and all of that. Yes, you can become friends as you go along. But what you are looking for is that are you compatible? Do you share the same vision? Uh, are there strengths that you have that the person does not have? Are there weaknesses that you have that the person uh, can, has a strength in? So those are the kind of things that you want to deal with. The problem with best friends going into business is that they are too emotional. If the person says, yes, you don't want to hurt the person, if they say, no, you don't want to. So you start playing emotional games in the business and you take decisions that are emotional, you will burn. Both of you will crash. That business will be in trouble. So my advice is... Um, if, if you're going to do, if you're going to go with friends, then please get a third person who is not your friend uh, inside that mix. The, and you will agree, all of you will agree that unless everybody agrees, nobody will move forward. Move forward. So if two of you are friends are sitting and um, uh, doing collabo and the third one say, no, I don't agree. It's not yeah. moving. You must stop. Wow. Wow. Impressive. Thank you so much, sir, for so far. Thank you. Okay, so what are some of the mistakes entrepreneurs make in growing their business? Some mistakes entrepreneurs what make. What has what? In, what are some mistakes entrepreneurs make in growing their business? Okay, um, I'll give you three. Okay, sir. So the first, yeah. So the first, the first is growing too fast. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so that's the that's the first mistake that they make. They grow too fast. You see, the entrepreneur's mindset uh, is that they can, everything is possible. Everything is possible. Can you do this? Ah, deal. Bring it. Bring it. They can do it. Ah, we can do it. So when you grow too fast, you have a problem. Uh, that business uh, will, will more or less crash. The second um, that entrepreneurs have is not hiring right. Uh, you need to be, you need to make sure that you hire for the, size and scale of the business that you have at the time. If you go and hire to somebody who is much way, way, way ahead of where the business is, you will be paying way too much at that point in time. Mm -hmm. be, and you are not even in the same. So the person will feel so underutilized, collecting so much money, you will fight, it won't work. If you are a chipo, 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 you go and look for the cheapest, cheapest person on the ground. Your business cannot move forward because the, the, whoever you are collecting does not have the same level of uh, ethos that you want to push forward. So you must yeah. always be careful to, to ensure that whoever you are bringing into the business at this point in time is the right person for, for, for the business. So don't expand too fast. Ensure that you have the right uh, um, employment strategy. But the third one okay. is, for goodness yeah. sake, have have the right structure. You see, governance mm -hmm. and business governance is so important. So many people just refuse to put structure in their business. They go anyhow, they do anyhow and all of that. And one of the greatest uh, failure in businesses and entrepreneurs is financial discipline. You will find that entrepreneurs have the same account for their business as their personal personal account and your personal life separate yeah. it's breaking yes you're breaking quite a bit i don't know who i don't know which network why it's breaking so much and i'm enjoying myself and it's breaking so much maybe we could have um you know something that helps 
live videos not to break at all. <laughs> now you understand. <laughs> that is how opportunities are created. Yeah? That is In how the midst of problems, you find yes. solutions. That's yes. Where Yes, yes, I love that. Okay, so, so maybe we, maybe maybe I should I should send in my proper business plan to you on that on that sir. I can't, I, like can't I can't I can't <laughs> wait I can't wait I can't wait. <laughs> All right, sir. Okay, so my next question says, how? Okay, must I have a full knowledge of the business product or service I want to go into? If you try, if you try to get hundred percent knowledge of the business before you start, you are never going to start. Uh, mm. If you wait, that you will be, you will become a professor of research in that business, and you will never be an entrepreneur. All you'll be doing is reading books and books and books. So the answer to that question is no. Should you jump into it without doing any research at all? The answer to that again is no. So you must do enough, right? for you to have the knowledge to begin. But remember how we started, that you must have a learning spirit. So you must know that all through the process, as you're going on, you are consist consistently learning, consistently learning. So get enough to allow you to start and then learn the process as you're moving, as you're moving on. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to you pick another that? question from... Okay. Yes, sir. I got that. I got that. I got that. Thank you so much, sir. So Joseph is saying, sir, presently businesses that flourish are based on an IT platform, on an IT platform based business model. Do yes. you advise Nigerian use to push this model with agriculture at the forefront? Absolutely. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, you have just been revealed. Somebody has just revealed to you uh, the secret opportunity for your business moving forward. Please, mm. don't waste time. Go and carry your agriculture. Layer it over technology and provide a solution. That is one of the way forward. So you already have it. You are, for you to ask that question, it means that you have the answer to that is a definite yes. Carry it and run. I mean, how do you say? Carry go, Adi. Just I hope that helps you. So carry and go. You have heard. Carry and run immediately. Because one thing I have learned is that ideas really come. But the ability to turn that idea to become a business or become something that everybody would commend is where the, the difficulty lies. So Joseph. If I were you, I would run immediately. So there's a question that has been popping up. Different people have asked this question, so I'm going to pick that one. How do you manage risk in business? How do you manage risk? Yes, sir. If you don't, if you don't have a stomach for risk, please get a paid job. Hmm. Huh? Wow. If, if you cannot manage risk in business, if you don't have the stomach for risk, in other words, you like safety, <laughs> stay away from business because business is risky mm. uh, risky so that's the first aspect of it so stay get get paid get a salary you're okay if you are going to be an entrepreneur and you want to do business then have the mind that there are risks associated with it have the stomach right to know that you will suffer loss or suffer a failure mm. have those two in mind then have the mindset that tells you that regardless, regardless of the blow that you receive, you will get up again and you will run. Have the mindset that if something hits and it goes down completely, let's assume that you go bankrupt totally. Huh? That's bankrupt. You cannot, the business dies so bad, it dies. You cannot stand up again. No problem. Have the mindset that every lesson that you learned from that business before it's not wasted you will mm. go and apply it in another business you wow. will start all over again and you will begin to build it but you will not make the same mistakes it's before yes. you see the mindset for the entrepreneur is a different type of mindset risk is something that comes but they know that they cannot be cast with risk you don't just 
get up and start doing anything. That's why you don't you don't just jump into any business because no, you sit down, you think about it, you calculate it, and you go in, take calculated risk. But if you say I'm not taking risk at all, I want it everywhere to be safe. Eh? There are jobs that pay. There are jobs that pay for that. <laughs> As you have heard. Uh... For the many people who ask that question, take calculated risk. If you don't have the belly to take risk, please go get a paid job. I've never heard that before. That is so insightful. Thank you so much, sir. Someone said, before I move to the people who sent in emails, someone said, what is your opinion on real estate for realtors? What's your opinion on real estate? So real, real estate has always been a sort of safety net. Um, most people take real estate as a way to hedge against uh, losses in the future. And so they just take it as a long-term gain. Uh, the reason why in Nigeria is so pertinent is because land in itself, land and access to land is made to be so difficult, so tough, yeah. that once you can get land, you hold on to it and you don't want to shake it. So that's why it's like that. But so real estate in itself does not have a problem. What you must think about when you're going into real estate is that you're tying your capital down for a long time. So you take it as an investment to hedge against all of this up and down and just put it and hold it there. So any, any, one, of the, one of the things that I would always advise anyone, especially in an economy that makes land a premium, like, like it does in Nigeria, it just makes it ridiculously expensive. Just begin to invest in it. The land, the place, the place that you bought land 20 years ago uh, at yeah. 200,000, 20 years ago, today you will not find it for 20 million. I okay? Agree. So don't worry yourself. Don't follow the trend that ah, everybody is inside the Koyi. Everybody is. Eh, no, no. Anybody who bought land at Bejuleki 30 years ago, today. So I'm a millionaire. Just, yeah. You know, just sit down and just eventually development will get to you. But take the mm. take your small money that you're having, the small change you have. Go outside Ugo State, Mowe is even expensive now. Just go yeah. and pay, buy that land, hold on to it. But when you go into real estate, eh, this is something that a lot of people don't do. Please make sure that your documentation is correct. Mm. Make sure. Sure. complete all your documents complete sure. it take the time to make sure that your document is complete see or full you have bought it take time just close that once you've closed it don't worry go to rest go to rest so it's a good business it's okay when do hope that helps and um, i got a few learnings as well on that so Mo magic is asking in your years of building empire what were you most what were your most challenging experiences for now for how we're able to okay so i think she's just saying that what for the, all the years of experience you've had in building an empire what were your most you know challenging experiences you know um, every every era and every time will bring something different uh, and and uh, generally as you grow your business remember there's always in the mind of the entrepreneur in the mind of a business person, there's always you always have more ideas than money uh, than you can find money for. You would always do it. So you come up with all sorts of ideas and all of that. Some good, some not good. And all. There's something that you have to call, that you call trade-offs. You must always decide that which one would you take over which one? Which place would you go over that? Now, those trade-offs and those decisions that you have to make are always very challenging. They're not easy, but you have to make them and you just have to continue making them. Now, so that's one. The next aspect of it is that are you in the relationships that you build along the way, are you going to meet people along the way that are all nice, everybody is great all the time, and all are you not meet any nasty people? Nah, Kai, you will meet some very nasty people, some people who will totally, totally make life in misery uh, for you while they are there. So yeah. you will come across those kind of people. But it's life. It's life. So just I would I would suggest to the person who asks, right, that you take, you, you build in your, building yourself a level of resilience, right, to know that you have what you call a no regret. Mm. Have, have what you will call a no regret policy. 
that whatsoever you decide to do, that you are not going to regret that you did it. Okay, don't go back, having taken a decision to move forward, to start second-guessing yourself and regretting that you did it. That will destroy you. So don't do that. That's so powerful. No regrets policy. You know, most times in life, things that make Absolutely. us avoid in that step is because we want to run away from regrets. We want to run away from things that might just hinder progress. So you've learned that today. No regrets policy. Yet another question for you, sir. If you have a business idea, how to do... Okay, so how do you ensure your partner and... Okay, so I think what the person is saying is if you have a business idea, how do you ensure your partner and the people you talk to about your business does not take advantage of you? Uh -uh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are you worried? <laughs> Look, first and foremost, uh, guys, you're going to meet all sorts of people. Eh? I can tell you that, you know what, sign a contract, sign the best contract, the most detailed contract ever, and that by signing that contract, by signing that contract, everything is going to be okay. We've signed contracts that are this thick, uh, line by line, initiated every single thing, and the business did not go forward. It still entered into trouble. We've signed business uh, documents that are just one paper, or just even a handshake, just one paper, yeah. and it has gone far. Okay, yeah. so you are not. If you start worrying yourself in that level, you have a problem. What you need to understand basically is that you either trust or you don't trust. If you don't trust, don't go into the business. If you trust, move. But if you go through a process, if you go through a process that says that you are not going to trust anybody, then you will remain a small business. If you go through the process that says that, you know what, uh, you cannot partner with anybody, you will remain small. You remain mm -hmm. small. And if that's for you is what is okay, then please stay there. But you want to grow, you want to be big, ah, you will take that risk. Go. Now, what is the main challenge? that you will share an idea and somebody will carry the idea and run away with the idea. I think it was Ali Baba that said to me once, he said, no matter who steals your idea, they can never do that idea better than you. Mm. If it's your idea. If they steal it, they can never execute it because the blueprint for executing that idea very well belongs to you. So they will carry it, they will fail in it. Don't, they, please don't worry they yourself. Don't have the blueprints. Yeah, they, they don't have the blueprint. Wow. They don't. Wow. So don't worry yourself. Yeah, that's so deep. That's so deep. Thank you, sir. And I hope the person who asked the question that was really, really helpful and insightful. So someone is asking, Miriam is asking, a business you're doing and it's not paying, do you keep pushing? So the business you're doing and it's not paying your services, do you keep pushing or do you quit? Uh, are you losing money? So it depends. So it depends on whether the business, when you say it's not making money, it's operating below your cost. So you are losing money consistently on it. That's number one. Now, number two is that in the projection, because some people have deep pockets, there are businesses that you can choose to go into and you will lose. So the graph goes something like this. So this is your line. The graph will first go down and then it will come up. Okay. Now at this bottom part where it goes down, the question this way you are spending and no profit is coming up. So the question that the question that you will ask yourself there, right, is that does the future prospect of this business actually turn around and will it make money? And then you say, How much for how long am I willing to burn money? Because I have either the deep pocket to do so and I can do that until it turns around. So there are many questions to that. If you don't have pockets and you cannot sustain a long loss. And you don't see that that industry is an industry that will turn around and start making money. Just move away from it. Mm -hmm. Cut your coat. Go and do something else. If, on the other hand, it shows that you can, you have the pocket, you have the ability to sustain a loss in that business because you know that it's an industry that you must spend first. Uh, you must spend. And then it comes up. Then, please, by all means, do it. Awesome. Awesome. Miriam, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. So our board therein is asking, did you have a people problem in bracket human resource and how did you handle it? Better still, how did you go about growing the right team? Is it poaching on the list or building and training your own team? 
so so i think i think one of the good things um that we that happened to us is that we grew with uh we started small okay so at the beginning you were able to pour yourself into your business you looked at it you put structure and all of that so you make mistakes you correct you refine and all of that so early on so two things that you must not be afraid of if you are building your business the first is that you must not be afraid to terminate people who are not working well okay give them time speak to them but please don't be afraid if they are not living up to scratch then please exit them let them go the second is that as you are growing your business you will find that some people that were useful in the business yesterday may not be useful in the business tomorrow it's okay it's all right if they cannot if they cannot move up into the next level that you are going through then they, that means that they have where they where, where they fit is no longer where you are going and all of that please let them go so you must have a mindset that allows you to know that you you you, you must equip right at every stage of your business equip right at every stage of your business so very important that you that you do that you cannot be overly sentimental in this so you train people spend enough to train spend enough to mentor spend enough to bring up and hope that everybody goes along with you, but not everybody will. Those who do not, please exit them going through. So um, I, well, I think that answers the question. I can't, I don't know. What else was, wow. what else was in the question? So uh, that, that was it really. Where you, I, did you, how did you grow your team? Were you coaching or were you training? So okay, you answered yeah. So, so yeah, we, we stayed away from, we stayed away from coaching. Uh, I think, I think, Poaching in itself, uh, I think poaching in itself is backhanded. It's a bit mean, uh, and I, I think the motive behind poaching, right, is not. It's a it, it's a mean. It's a mean. Um, it's not nice. Let me just put it that way. Mm. Because essentially, what what you are doing is you are undermining somebody else, right? Because yeah. you are poaching them. If on the other hand, if on the other hand, somebody who is in the company is no longer satisfied there and wants to move to you, different. But for me to go to you and begin to speak behind you, behind your, uh, your employees or your employers and turn your mind against them and then carry you, I think, I, for me, we don't do it. So one of the things we never did was go and push anybody. We never, ever did it. We, and we just believe that what you sow, you will reap. You go there, put in people. Very soon, they'll come and put all your... All your... <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad for you if it's all your strong stuff. Then you're, Exactly. You're... Yeah. No, no, no. I don't, I don't agree with that. I agree. I agree. So, so just as I learned so much from you, so I'm going to also take that into learning. Learn not to poach because what goes yeah, around yeah. may just come around. Yeah, it's, it's not nice. They're, they're, they're not good people. And you can train good people. You can find good people. Putin is a shortcut, right, to success at the expense of somebody else's sweat. It's not nice. It really yeah. is not nice. But Wow. That's so great. Okay, so um, many, many, so many questions. So it looks like we're going to plead for a part two of this session and I'm going to <laughs> allow the audience to beg because I'm already begging. I have too many questions and our time is just running, sir. Okay, so another question for you here is, having successfully built an empire in the Nigerian market from your wealth of experience, what are your experiences and learning that could help Nigerian entrepreneurs and business owners generally? Sorry, I lost the question. It all broke. Okay, sir. So having successfully built an empire in the Nigerian market, from your wealth of experience, what are the experiences and learnings that could help the Nigerian entrepreneur or business owners? Okay. All right. So, so being Nigerian, first and foremost, right, uh, puts you at a at an advantage, but most times, most people don't understand that advantage. So the first advantage that being Nigerian does, right, it tells you that you don't take anything for granted. You really need to hustle. You must just push. So you have a spirit that allows you to push. It, you have a spirit that, allows, that tells you that if you make the effort to really, really push, that you will go far. Now the difference, where people don't understand it, is that they mistake they want to take the shortcuts. And what does the shortcuts mean? 
just bribe somebody here, pay somebody there, go behind the scene and do all of those things. And they forget that the key of what they have, that I can do it, that determined spirit to push, is what keeps you and sustains you in the long time. So those who have cut out the effort, that innate thing that allows them to just push and build the business and have taken the shortcut mechanism of bribery and uh, and all of that, they lose the essence of what it means to be a real business person. And so the enterprise that they set up always ultimately fails. Now, they, individual, may extract money from that business uh, for themselves because of how they got it. So they will extract money for themselves and they will not care about the business. The business in itself will fail. But if, on the other hand, as an entrepreneur and somebody who wants to build a sustainable business, you just focus on the thing that makes you unique, you will last. And that's the difference. So one is easy. The other one is hard. One is fast. The other one takes time. One goes up very quickly and crashes. The other one takes its time Mm -hmm. and it continues to grow. But it's a choice. It's a choice. You have to make the choice. And you cannot be driven by what people are saying. Ah, look, uh, this person is, this, this one is making it, making it. Why are you not making it? Let's go and bribe. Let's go and pay this. If that's what you want to do, it's a choice. Go and do it. But I can assure you, you won't last. You just will not last. You will not last. You won't last. Over time. And some people, they, they think, when I say you won't last, they think it will happen in one year. They, ah, but this person has been doing it for 10 years. No yeah. problem. On the 11th year, he will crash. Hmm. Only you are still there for 12 years, 15 years, 30 years. Yes, that's it. Hmm. Amazing. Thank you so much, sir. So, sir, so many people have been requesting and saying yes to part two, yes to part two, yes to part two. So, sir, we are pleading for a part two <laughs> of this session sir, in the future. Thank you, sir. So, someone is saying, I lent you a pastor. How do you balance ministry and business? Cheese and means, business. Sir. Question. And business, beautiful. Yes, so the first thing I will tell the person uh, is that go and read the Bible. It's full of businessmen. Uh, mm. b- <laughs> businessmen from the beginning to the end, you will find them all over the place. Go and read the book of Proverbs. Uh, the book of Proverbs will tell you so many business secrets, so many mm. business secrets. If you understand and you can unpack the Bible and you can unpack the principle where God begins to speak to you about the principles of business, balance scale. You see all these things that I was telling you about, that God says, I, I hate an unbalanced scale. I hate people who will tell you one thing and they will go and do another thing. That integrity is important. Don't say what you cannot do. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever you find that you must do, do it diligently with your hands. When you find something to do, discover your purpose. Stay in it. Man, God is the master planner. He is the master planner. He has given so many, so many secrets for you to succeed. And he also tells you, he says, he talks, he tells you, he says you can bribe. uh, But if you bribe, guess what? That you will fail. He says that a bribe, a gift, he will make a way for you very quickly. So go and do it. But he will also tell you that he perverts the heart of justice. Then he tells you that he hates perversion. He hates a lying mouth. Anyway, let me not preach. So I'm not going to go into it. The pastor is Okay, so sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, sir, I really don't want us to be cut out. I have a question for yes. you, sir. Yes. A personal question. Yes. So, looking at your very busy schedule, looking yes. at how successful you are, and above all, the fact that you wear different hats, how are you able to still be calm, do so many things, and these so many things are still very productive. This is my personal question to you, sir. As you get older, you get wiser. As you get wiser, <laughs> as you get wiser, you understand that there is power, there is a power in collaboration. Hmm. You understand that there is a power in delegation. As you get wiser, you know, as you get older, you also know that there is a power in looking for people who are wiser than you stronger than you, sharper than you, who can go further than you, and then you empower them to do better than you. Once you can do all of those things, then it takes weight off you. You see, the main problem that a lot of people have, right, is that they think that they can do everything and they don't want to, they don't want to give others an opportunity to do something. 
people, me, I cannot do everything and I'm not interested in doing everything. Mm -hmm. What I'm interested in doing is making sure that I make a difference. So I look for people who can do. We collaborate together and they go and do great things. And, oh, it's okay. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy that way. Hmm. Thank you so much, sir. That is so strong. So the older you get, the wiser you become. The more collaborations that you seek, more delegations, then look for people that you can pour into, people you can empower. And with that, there's a lot of stress taken of you for you to be able to create an impact. Thank you so much, sir, for that word. I needed to ask that. I needed to be selfish. I needed to ask did my you write? Did you write all of that? I'm going <laughs> Wow. Yes, <laughs> and you really answered it properly. I'm going to take this into my personal learning as well. Sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. So, someone, so many people are asking, how did you start? How were you able to grow, Sahara? I know I've seen more than four people ask that question. So, sir, do you want to okay. please take that, that, que that question? By now, everybody just go and look for a YouTube page or go and read. <laughs> I've answered that question so many times. Oh, I, no, I, too many right. times. Every time they ask the question, I, <laughs> look, <laughs> I have to find. I have to find a very short answer for this one. Uh, look, at the end of the day, we started out of a crisis. We started because uh, the Nigeria went through a crisis, much like this, and the job that I was having at the time collapsed. We started because uh, three of us decided that you know what, let's put our heads together and do something that we can say you are putting taking your destiny into your hands and we burnt the bridges you know you burnt the bridge so that there was no turning back you knew that it was this if you failed in this one that's it so you just put your head fully into it so three young people decided that this is what they want to do they put their heads into it and put everything that they could into the business you remove self person self out of it we stayed mm -hmm. behind before yeah. people knew who the uh, faces, my face, my partner's face, who the cases were in Sahara. It took five years. The company was already, and they, they had no idea that we were, no, no idea. It was, as far as they were concerned, it was a brand. We are building a brand. We wanted you to remember, see the brand first. Know the brand. You don't, if I ask you who founded Coca-Cola, what's his name? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know? True. Isn't it? No. Do you know? No. Exactly. No. I, we no. don't. But you drink Coke easily any day. Anyway, maybe you don't anymore. But you see, so the point is that the point is that develop a brand. It is not important that you are the one that is named. Oh, I'm the one. It's me. I'm the CEO. Your face is all over the place. And all. No, the brand. You want your brand to outlive you. You want a brand to outlive you. Stay behind. Let the brand go. Let the brand be the one that stands, so that you can step out. Look, I stepped out of Sahara two years ago. Okay. I stepped out of Sahara two years ago. But as far as people are concerned, it's still running. Most people will leave it, their brand. They will leave the company. The day they leave the company, everything will collapse. Everything collapses, yeah. Everything will collapse. I stepped out and I'm doing, I'm building a whole different life out there. But the mere fact that you built a brand that can stand, that is a testimony. And that's what you should be doing. Step out. Allow your brand to grow. You know, don't compete with your brand. What are you competing with your brand for? You are the brand. The, why are you competing? What is it? Great. Please, step out. Let the Stop. brand be the one. Because it's the brand. You will die one day. You die. When you die, let your brand stay. But you are competing with the brand. You are in front of the brand. The brand is behind. What will happen? You will die. The brand will die. You stay in front. You stay behind. Let the brand run. If you fall out, the brand will continue. So just, I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah. Or what, that that's makes for you. sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so sir, so many people have, oh no, I'm not going to answer this. So many people have said I should share my success story because you <laughs> asked for it. Yes. All I'm going to say is, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Well, for me, when, you know, you ask the question, how am I able to do all of these things? And, you know, how am I able to, for me, I would say when I have the right people around me, right people I look up to, but maybe during the Fatsusa, I promise I'm going to share, but for today, it's all about you 
I'm not sharing. I know that so many people have been writing it, isn't it? It's time for you to share. It's time for you to share. There'll be another day for me. Today is all about our speaker. Thank you so much, sir, for today. There are still so many questions, and I'm glad that, you know, do we have a yes from you, sir, as regards to part two? Yeah. We have so many you know, questions. You know, you, know you have a way of twisting my hand, so... Uh, <laughs> We know, we know where we meet. It's all right. <laughs> it's so, so very much. So, sir, what one last advice would you leave for every one of us before you go, sir? My last advice is, don't, look, believe in yourself, okay? Just believe in yourself. You already pointed out that opportunities will exist. We're coming into a difficult period, and that's true, right? But the difficult period is for people who don't believe that they can survive. Those who believe that they will get out of this will get out of this. Those who believe that they can create the opportunities and they will find a way through it will find a way through it. So please, please, please believe in yourself. You are leading in a place where many people are afraid. And that gives you an advantage. Because they are afraid, you know yourself. Get up. Lead from the front. Get up and go. They will follow you. They will follow you. But stop looking at other people and just be crying in the, in the gutter with them. No, you get up from the gutter, stand on the road, wash, and start walking. Everybody else will come up and they will follow you. So that's my word for you. Just leave. Thank you so, so much, sir. It's been an insightful, inspiring, and it's been an amazing session with you. I would say that personally, I learned a whole lot from you. What do you expect when you have a successful guru? with you you learned so much thank you so much sir and once again from the entire committee <laughs> from the entire team of the shikan nigeria we want to say thank you so much for sparing your time out of your very busy schedule which sincerely appreciate it please guys help me appreciate him everyone is appreciating you sir <laughs> so great. thank you so much sir and have god a bless great you Amen. you too thank take you. care god bless you bye-bye Okay, guys, hope you had fun. Hope you learned a lot. For me, I learned a whole lot of things. Like I have my diary full of some information that I have picked up. Hope you learned. Hope you learned. Hope this has been so inspiring and hope all our series has been really, really good. Hope you've been learning something. And for me, I'll say don't just learn alone. Put into action all you have learned. It's easy to learn. It's easy to get new knowledge. It's easy to do all of this. But the most difficult part is to start implementing. So I leave with you this. Start implementing from today. Create your own business. I wish you the very best. Same time next week. Next week is going to be 8 p.m. And we'll be having the Nigerian Morning Heist here with us. Look out for it. Love you all. Stay blessed. God bless you. God bless Nigeria and keep winning. Remember, she can do more. Yeah, yeah, she can.